We have spent a lot of time now learning how to evaluate the trigonometric function values, particularly how to evaluate the sine and cosine values for a given angle. And also, we learned before how to graph a function. So now we're going to look at the graphs of the sine and cosine functions. These are the sine function and cosine function given in the function notation, as we're already familiar with. Here, in each function, x again is the independent variable. It represents an angle that's given in radian, because if you recall, when an angle is given in radian, it is dimensionless. And since we have learned how to evaluate the sine and cosine values for any given angle, x here can be any real number, which means that for both sine and cosine functions, the domain includes all real number from negative infinity to positive infinity. And again, since we know how to evaluate these functions, we can always use the point plotting method to plot the graph for the function. I hope the following animation gives you a good idea how to graph a sine function. In the previous animation, we saw the sketching of one full period of the sine function, which covers angles from 0 to 2 pi, which, as we know, is a full revolution of the circle. Before or after that, the function value will start repeating itself. As a result, the graph of sine function is a continuous wave. We already mentioned the domain for the sine function includes all real number from negative infinity to positive infinity. Also, sine function value is always between negative 1 and positive 1, and that is the range of the sine function negative 1 to positive 1, including both ends. So the total height of the sine function is 2, and half of that is known as the amplitude. So in this case, the amplitude of this sine function is 1. Lastly, the graph of the function is symmetrical about the origin. That makes the sine function an odd function. When we sketch the graph for the sine function, we only need to sketch one period because after that, the graph starts to repeat itself. In order to sketch this one period, it's useful to remember five special points. The intercept 0, 0, the maximum half a pi 1, intercept again pi 0, the minimum 3 half a pi negative 1, and lastly, another intercept, 2 pi, 0. And that completes the first period of the sine function. And then connect these five points with a smooth curve, and you get the graph for the sine function. By evaluating cosine function values of different angles, we can sketch the graph of the cosine function. Similarly, cosine function has a period of 2 pi, again that corresponds to one full revolution. The domain for cosine function also includes all real number. For the range, cosine function value also can only be between negative 1 and positive 1, therefore the range for cosine function is from negative 1 to positive 1, including both ends. And the overall height of the cosine function is 2, half of that is the amplitude which is again 1, and if you look at the graph of the cosine function, you will notice that it is symmetric about the y-axis, and that makes it an even function. To sketch the cosine function, again, it is helpful to remember the five special points in the first period. The maximum 0, 1, intercept half a pi 0, minimum pi negative 1, intercept again, 3 half pi 0, and then another maximum 2 pi 1. 
then the graph repeats itself. If you recall, we have already learned the general rules to transform the graph of one function into another. Here, g function is related to the f function through the real non-zero coefficients a, b, c, and d. And if you still remember those rules, a corresponds to vertical stretching, shrinking, or reflection depending on if it's negative or not. b corresponds to horizontal stretching, shrinking, or reflection. c corresponds to horizontal shifting, and d corresponds to vertical shifting. And we're going to apply those rules to sketch functions in the form of this or this. Now, all the rules we learned previously apply here, but we're going to look at two examples and learn some tricks that are specific for sine and cosine functions. In this example, we need to sketch this function based on the parent function fx equals to sine x. Here we have four coefficients. The first one is a, that is 2. We just said that this coefficient is responsible for vertical shrinking, stretching, or reflection. Since it is positive, therefore there is no reflection involved. Therefore it's going to change the height of our function. And we know that the height of the function divided by 2 is the amplitude of the function. Therefore. As a general rule, the amplitude of the function after transformation equals to the absolute value of a times 1, which is the absolute value of a. Why 1? This is because for the parent sine function, its amplitude is 1. And after transformation, in this example, the amplitude of the new function is the absolute value of 2, which is again 2. Then we look at the coefficient b, which is 3. Again, this coefficient is responsible for horizontal shrinking, stretching, or reflection. It is positive, therefore no reflection involved. Now, it's going to change the width of the period. And as a general rule, the period of the new function after transformation equals to 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Why 2 pi? This is again because the parent sine function has a period of 2 pi. And after transformation, for this example, the period of the function will be 2 pi over 3, which is smaller than 2 pi, which indicates a horizontal shrinking, which agrees to our previous knowledge. Now let's look at the coefficient c, which is negative half a pi that's responsible for horizontal shifting. This is the most confusing part, and I hope you can follow the rule that I'm going to introduce next when you are sketching this type of graphs. If you look at the parent function fx equals to sine x, the graph is continuous and endless. Therefore, you can start sketching wherever you want. However, the most convenient way is to sketch the first period from 0 to 2 pi. And then you can just repeat the graph period after period. So now we're trying to find the new start point and new end point for our new gx function by equating this part to 0 and 2 pi, and then solve for x respectively. Therefore, from the first equation, we solve x to be 6 pi, that is our new start point. And from the second equation, we solve x to be 5, 6 pi, and this is our new end point. Therefore, on our coordinate system, we find the start point and the end point, x equals to 6 pi and 5, 6 pi. And this corresponds to the first period of this function graph. 5, 6 pi minus 6 pi is indeed 2 third pi. And then the amplitude is 2. And within the first period, we sketch the parent sine function. And then we can sketch some more by repeating this graph. 
but our job is not done yet. There's another coefficient here, but that's easy because this one here simply indicates a vertical shifting. And in this case, this is a vertical shifting up by one unit. Therefore, we move the entire graph up by one unit. And now we complete the graph for the G function. Let's look at another example. We need to sketch this function based on the parent cosine function. Again, we have four coefficients. A is negative 1.5, which indicates the amplitude for this new function is the absolute value of A, which is positive 1.5. B is half a pi, which indicates the period for this new function is 2 pi over the absolute value of B. Again, it is 2 pi because for cosine function, the parent function also has a period of 2 pi. Therefore, 2 pi over half a pi, that equals to 4. And then the parent cosine function has the same start point of 0 and the end point of 2 pi for its first period. Again, we equate this part within the parenthesis to be 0 and 2 pi. And from these two equations, we solve respectively the new start point x equals to negative 2 and new end point x equals to 2. So on our coordinate system, we mark the amplitude. Now, from our new start point x equals to negative 2 to our new end point x equals to 2, can we simply sketch the parent function of the cosine function? Don't forget here, we have a negative sign in front of this coefficient, which indicates a vertical reflection. So instead, we need to sketch this reversed cosine function graph. And this corresponds to a period of 2 minus negative 2, which equals to 4. And this agrees with our previous calculation of the period. And then we can repeat the graph for some more periods. But again, we're not done yet because we have another coefficient, negative 1 here, which simply indicates a vertical shifting downward by one unit. So we move this entire graph down by one unit. And now we complete the graph for this new gx function. And I would always encourage you to double check to see if you have got the transformation correct. How do you do that? You can simply plot a point. In this case, it looks like when x equals to 4, the function value is 0 0.5. So I will leave it to you to verify that if g 4 equals to 0 0.5.